Over the next couple of lessons, we're going to talk about adding vectors. And here in the first one, we're going to talk about adding them graphically with an emphasis on doing it by components. So that really sets us up well for the next lesson when we're going to talk about doing the math behind it to actually calculate what it is. But we're going to actually be able to calculate using graphs as well. Now, a reminder, a measurement that has both magnitude and direction is what we call a vector. Key being that it not only has a length to it or a number associated with it, but it also has a definite direction. Um, we represent vectors with an arrow. So whenever we add them, if vectors are going the exact same way, then life is very easy. Maybe this is a boat traveling down a stream and the boat can travel at 9.0 meters per second and the stream current is at 3.0 meters per second. And so we end up with a resultant velocity, R standing for resultant or the addition of two vectors. Resultant means the addition of two vectors. 12.0 meters per second. That's not that hard. And then maybe this one down below, I've got a boat traveling upstream, 9.0 meters per second, but the current is fighting it, going the opposite way, 3.0 meters per second. The resultant velocity of this boat would be 6 meters per second. So whenever you're going the same direction, you add, or opposite directions, you subtract. Those are pretty straightforward. What happens though whenever we get to vectors that are actually at angles to each other, like these two. Let's talk briefly about just sketching them, and then let's move off of sketching, which is not the emphasis of this lesson, and actually get into dealing with components. If we have two vectors that are tail to tip, notice how the tip of this vector and the tail of that vector actually touch. The resultant runs from the first tail to the second tip, just like that. And I need to put a point on my arrow indicating which direction my uh, resultant velocity ends up going. If I have two vectors that are tail to tail, the resultant vector is going to fall between them somewhere in here. The way I actually figure that out is I take this vector down here and I keep its magnitude and direction the same, make a copy of it if you will, and put it up there at the tip of the other vector, making a tail to tip kind of, uh, kind of diagram. And then I do the same thing with this vector, putting it over here, making a tail to tip diagram. Notice how it creates what's called a parallelogram here. And the resultant vector runs from the tails to the tips. Now, being able to do the parallelogram is not the emphasis of this lesson, and that's not what I'm concerned with you knowing about in this one. Instead, what, what I want you to know is the resultant vector falls between the two vectors if you're just trying to sketch. Now, problem here, if I want to actually know how far I travel, displacement, notice that these were in meters, or if I want to know how hard I was pulling on something, the net force here, notice these were in newtons, I don't actually know from my sketch. I just know kind of the direction-ish that it was going. So let's hop over to the next couple of slides and actually look at how we could calculate those dis that displacement or that force. A component is a part of something that, that makes it up. And so for vectors, we actually can talk about vector components. Vector, vectors have two, if we break them down, into very, two very simple components. An x component that falls purely in the left and right, this vector would have an x component that ran like this. It just goes as far right as it can for that vector. Here's the x component. And a y component that runs completely vertical there. Almost as if for a vector, here's my y component, almost for a vector, while it's 100 meters at 53 degrees that way, you could walk straight right and then straight up and get to the exact same spot instead of doing those vectors. That's the components of the vector or the x component and y component. And getting those numbers, are, whenever you're doing it graphically, is very easy. Notice my scale, or my key over here, is 10 meters. So this x component must be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 meters. And my y over here is going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 meters. So that's breaking a vector into components there. We can do that even if it's not in quadrant one. Let's say here it's in 
quadrant four, it's the exact same thing. My scale is saying 10 meters per second is, uh, is, is what my scale is here. So my X component looks like it is running this direction here. X is going to end up equaling going negative, negative 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 meters per second. A reminder for uh, a reminder here whenever you're dealing with um, a uh, XY coordinate system, positive Y goes up, positive X goes to the right, negative Y goes down, negative uh, X goes to the left. Th that's what you're completely used to. That's why my X here is negative 50 meters per second. And then the Y it looks like I'm just going up two, and so that's 10, 20, and then I'm going upwards, so my Y is gonna end up being positive 20 meters per second. In other words, getting components graphically is very, very simple. You just really count. You just simply count over. How far does it go over? And then that's going to give you your X. How far does it go up? That'll give you your Y. Now the power of being able to get a vector component or a vector piece is that you can split all the vectors apart into their pieces and then actually add them together to get a resultant vector. Now a reminder about how to find vector components. All you're doing is counting, not complicated here. To find the X component of the 67 at 26 degrees, graphically all I have to do is count. I'm going by 10 newtons for each one here. These are force vectors. So I just simply count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 newtons. This one's 60 newtons there. And then I count my Y's going up 10, 20, 30. Here is 30 newtons up. And that's how I find my vector components. I just simply count over and then up. Same exact thing here for my 82 at 80, 82 newtons at 80 degrees. I'm not dealing with the magnitude and the angle right now. I just have to count on my graph. This is going over 20 degree or 20 newtons and then is going up whenever you count that out 80 newtons. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 newtons. So you just count over to get your X and you count up to get your Y. Now that I have all of my vectors broken down into pieces, I can actually recombine them to create my resultant vector. One way to think about it is if you take something apart into their individual pieces, so I take two things apart into their individual pieces, I can then take those pieces and combine them together to create one larger thing, and that's what we're going to do. Now, vectors, are I'm allowed to move around wherever I want as long as the magnitude, that's the length, and the direction remain the same. So I'm gonna use that advantage and I'm going to take my vector components, I'm gonna move them over to this other act, to this other graph over here. That way it's easier to see what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna stack my X's together like this. And I'm gonna stack my Y's at the end of that, like that to create one large X and Y component here. So in other words, I am pretty much adding my X's here to come out with a how many times over total X total equals here 80 Newtons and a Y total here my Y total here is going to be uh, 110 Newtons for my Y total I'm stacking my X's and I'm stacking my Y's. I'm adding my X's and I'm adding my Y's to end up getting a total X and a total Y. How far over do I go and how far up do I go? Now these are all tail to tips, so drawing the resultant vector is pretty easy. It's just simply go from the tails. Let's actually try to get that straight to where I'm going here. Go from the tails to the tips. R, and R would have components, those res that resultant would have a component of positive 80 Newtons and positive 10 newton, 110 newtons in the y. What does this mean for adding vectors? What you do to add two vectors like these two over there is you break them into their pieces and you simply 
add their X pieces to get your X total, and then you add your Y pieces to get your Y total, and that tells you how far over to count. I would, to draw my resultant vector, I would count over 80. So let's go ahead and do that on this graph over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm coming right here at this spot, and then I'm gonna count up um, 110, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 110 right here. And so I'm able to draw my, where my resultant vector would end up going. So what does this actually mean for us in solving problems? The long and short of it is all you have to do is really count your x's, add them together, and then count your y's, add them together, to get your resultant vector. It's really just counting. It's that simple. So for this first one, my x total here is going to be looking at the blue vector. I'm going over 1, 2, 3. So I've got a 3 for the blue plus in the for the red vector here, I'm going over nothing in the x. It's all in the y-axis. So for my red vector, a 0 or for my x total here, x total equals 3. For my y total, I'm going to end up counting over now or counting up for my blue, which it doesn't go up at all. So the blue here is going to end up being a 0 plus, let's actually get a plus sign down there, plus um, for the red, I'm counting up 1, 2, 3, 4. So my y total must be 4. And these are meters here looking at the correct unit. So to draw my resultant vector, I count over three, one, one, two, three, and then count up four, one, two, three, four. And there's my resultant vector. That's straightforward. For my next example problem, it looks like the blue is going over one, two in the x-axis. So my x total here is gonna end up equaling positive 10, or excuse me, positive 20. Notice my scale down over here, 10 newtons by 10 newtons. Looks like I'm dealing with forces right now. Plus, the red vector, though, is actually coming back in the negative x direction there. Let's, plot, let's put these on there just in case we end up forgetting. The red, the red is actually going back negative. Negative 10, 20, 30, 40, negative 40 for my red here. So my x total is actually going to end up giving me a negative 20 newtons. Let's put a newtons on that 40 to actually make that correct here. My y total is going to end up for the blue, it looks like I'm going up 10, 20, 30. So a positive 30 newtons for the blue. And my red is also going up 10, 20. My y total then, of course, would be 50 newtons. And that lets me draw my resultant vector. It looks like I need to count over negative 20, so negative 10, negative 20, and then up here, 50. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 right there and so I can draw my resultant vector. Notice that since they were tail to tail here that the resultant vector, tail to tail, the resultant vector should fall between them. As it did, I'm just actually able to count out where it's supposed to go, draw the arrow tip going the correct direction from the tails going outwards there. All right, one last example problem here. Looks like I've got vectors in quadrants three and four, so I'm expecting possibly some negative numbers with this one here. My x total here from the blue, it looks like I need to count over positive 10, 20. Notice that I'm in meters per second, 10 meters per second. So this is going to be a positive 20 meters per second. But my red is going in the negative x direction, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 negative 50 meters per second for my uh, red here, giving me an x total 
of negative 30 meters per second. Now my y's look like they're all going in the negative y direction. Remember down is negative y and up is positive y here. So it looks like we're going down on all of them. The blue goes down 10, 20. So negative 20 meters per second is how far down the blue goes. And the red goes down also, but it goes down 10, 20, 30. Negative 30 meters per second, making my y total to be negative 50 meters per second. So to draw my resultant vector, I need to count over to the left, negative 30 here, so 10, 20, 30, and then I need to count down 50, negative 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And that's where my resultant vector would go. So the beauty of actually solving these, if you're able to solve the problem graphically, um, because it's on nice graph paper and it's showing you uh, which direction to go, if you're solving these graphically, you can actually figure out and draw to the correct length um, and in the correct direction your resultant vector r just simply by counting your x's and counting your y's. Add up the x components, add up the y components, and you're able to figure out where your resultant vector is supposed to go.